Welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to another word-filled message by David Entry. Preaching is the means by which God manifests his word and nourishes our spirits. May the life of God enter into you and you as you listen to this message. Be blessed. Praise God. Shout the believing hallelujah. I want to straight away go into the word of God. Luke chapter 2. Interesting, very powerful. And it's the early part of Luke chapter 2 is the, the most, um, most famous, as you say, story about Jesus in the world, which is usually called the Nativity. I am inclined to title, give a title to tonight's message. Really, I want to focus on peace, but uh, I'm inclined to uh, title it the Rainbow. The rainbow culture, rainbow, the rainbow community, the rainbow culture. <laughs> Do you want me to tell you about the rainbow culture? Let's get into the text in the book of, um, in the book of Luke, chapter two. Bible tells us about how um, there was a, a, a decree that everybody should go to his hometown, his place of birth, to be. Um, uh, for censorship, so to be numbered. And Joseph had to go because Joseph comes from the city of David. He is from the, the, the tribe of David. So he had to go to Bethlehem and he had to go with his uh, betrothed wife um, who was, Bible said she was heavy with child. Wow, that's a very nice King James English. Betrothed, she was heavy with child. She was also, she was great with child. Child, yeah, she was great with child. Um, they went to be, and then in those days, she was in labor and she gave birth. And when she gave birth, she brought forth a, a man child. And it's very interesting that the Bible didn't take too much. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling cloth and laid him in the in a manger because there was no room in, in the inn for them or the, for them in the inn. So, um Look at the next verse. That's very interesting contrast. Nothing was said so much about the, uh, the, the, the the labor was not dramatized at all. She was, look at verse 7 again. She brought forth the son. That's it. Too. She was, verse 6, look at verse 6. Um, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she, she so she was in labor. And she brought forth a son. They didn't tell us much about the Bible. They didn't say about uh, the complications or what, how things went. No, no, no. She just was in labor and she brought forth a child. And then they left the story there. And then they took us to something very important. The Bible took us to something very important. <laughs> Jesus has been born. The God man has arrived. Now let's get on with business. That's very important. So the Bible says that whilst and there were in the same country, shepherds abided in the fields, keeping over their flock by night. And say, see what? So they have to introduce who we are talking about. And the angel of the Lord came, came, uh, uh, came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, ran about them, and they were so afraid. I'm terribly afraid because what is this? They've never seen anything like this before. And the angel said, "Don't be afraid. Don't fear. Don't fear." Why shouldn't you fear? For behold, I'm not coming to trouble you. Actually, he said, I bring, fear not, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. I bring you good tidings. There's so much packed in from verse 1 to 10. But I just want to pull out something from it for you to know God is on your, on your side. And the angels came. So you're talking about when we read in chapter 1. The, these two wonderful women, they all focused on both the the godness of the son that was about, was about to be born and the sonness of this God who is coming into us. So the humanness. So the humanness of God and the godness of in one person. It's not like he was, when Jesus was born, he wasn't like, you know, uh, when we, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So God the Son came. So 33 point. Uh, 33.33% of God has come. No, 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 no. No. He is the entirety of God who was wrapped 
that's a very interesting that's what makes it a mystery okay that's what makes the christian message a mystery yet a good news and god kept hit, hit this mystery in himself from the foundation of the earth according to romans chapter 16 from from verse 20, uh, 25 and 26 he god hid it inside him in ephesians chapter 3 verse 5 6 7 the bible said god hid it so so um this is a mystery. Great is the mystery of godliness. In verse 2, chapter 3, verse 16, it says that without all controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. God himself, he chose to be like uh, in the flesh. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached among unto the Gentiles. So, back to Luke. It says that, and um, as I was saying, chapter 1, these two women focus on his humanity and his they were the only people who could tell he's the son of God and he's a son of man. Elizabeth said, whoa, the mother of my Lord. Oh, so human, that's a human being. He's going to give birth to another human being, yet he's your Lord. Yeah, it takes it takes a certain insight. And Mary says that that the, the, uh, the, uh, um, I am blessed amongst women. All right, and then it, it says that for, for um, God, my Savior, should do this for me. All right, so he was carrying God his savior jesus christ is the savior and at the same time he was god so these two women and then we show we see how the god was born what shows that is god because angels had to come down and make the announcement themselves so god had been born amongst man human fully human 100 percent human and 100 percent god wow that's beautiful so god was born amongst men and then once he was born he lived a human life the angels went to announce that an angel appeared to the shepherds, verse 10, whilst shepherds were keeping their flocks, an angel of the Lord says, Fear not, I bring you uh, a b- good tidings of great joy, which shall be to not the Jews, it shall be to all people. Somebody say all people. I bring you uh, great, uh, good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So the angel came and made the, the announcement and said, What I have brought to you, it's changing, it affects all human beings. Every human being benefits from it. So I bring you uh, uh, good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, all of us, everyone on earth. It's great, uh, shall be to all people. It's good news to all people. Are all people going to access that good news? It's subject to faith. It's subject to belief. All right. Now verse, verse 11. For unto you is born this day, in the city of David, a savior. Ah, see that thing has appeared again. A savior, a savior has been born. Really? A savior? You see what Mary said? The angel repeated. A savior has been born in the city of David. And this savior is Christ. He is the Lord. It's always talking about the humanity and the divinity of Christ. He's so God and yet man. That is what confuses other religions. It confuses and it infuriates the devil. Satan hates it when you say Jesus is God and Jesus is man. And the Jews actually killed him because he said they said he 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 be mad man makes himself equal with God. <laughs> so they crucified him for the what he said about himself that he was God. Anyway, so um, the angel says that this is good news for all men for. In the city of David uh, uh, is born unto you a, a savior. Then look at the next verse, verse 12. Verse 12. And he said, I showed them that when you go, maybe there may be other children born, but this will be the sign. So you don't miss, you don't miss him. God doesn't want you to miss Christ. Let's quickly go on. I want to show you something. You don't miss him. And then he said, verse, verse 13, please. And verse 13 says that, and suddenly. This is where the message is. Two points I want to make. Suddenly, there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts singing, uh, sorry, praising God and saying, okay, so what they were saying, well, it's so significant. So suddenly, many angels, uh, the, uh, the, uh, choir of, the choir of heaven came, started singing. The only human beings, who, or the only human being who was born and angels had to come and sing. They came and parties because this is the day the Lord has made. Since that time, every time you access 
Christ in a, in the in with faith, you provoke heavenly excitement because that's why he was born, and that that the content, the lyrics of their song would tell you a lot about why they were singing. They were singing because glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to God in the highest, but not only God. So this thing is about God and man. This thing is about God and man, not only God, but man as well. Not only man, but God as well. So he said, glory to God in the highest, but not just in the highest, and on earth. Peace, someone shall peace. Now, this is where I want to focus a little bit. On earth, peace, glory, glory. Jesus came and he was the expression of God's glory. Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ, every glory that we will see from God. You know how I was teaching the other time and I, the Bible says that uh, Galatians 1, 24, it says they glorified God. Christ in me or the glorified God in me. Yes, the objective, God's plan is that we should bring him glory. The glorified God in me. God's plan is that we should bring him glory. We the people who he inhabits. So when God shows up on earth, he shows up for his glory. Listen, anything in your life that does not reflect the glory of God, that does not bring the glory of God, uh, bring glory to God, we crush it, we crush it, we crush it, we crush it in the name of Jesus Christ. First of all, it's about God's glory. It's not about a pastor's declaration, but it's about God's glory. It's about God's glory. It's not even about somebody's job, but it's about God's glory. It's not about somebody's healing. It's about God. First, let's put first things first. The angels came, and that was the content of their song. Glory to God in the highest. This son who has been born, if you want to talk about the Savior, it's all about glory to God in the highest. If you want to talk about salvation, it's all about glory being to God in the highest. If you want to talk about deliverance, about healing, about breakthrough, about supernatural turnaround, about salvation, what it, what it is, talk about it. It's all about the glory of God. That is why you can't be a believer and not live for the glory of God. It's, it's risky. And you are, you are going to uh, uh, live below the standard of the goodness of God. The reason why God will bless you is not for you to spite your enemies and those who don't like you or those who didn't believe you, they believe in you. The reason why God will bless you is for his glory. For his glory. Joseph said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Genesis chapter 50, verse 19 and 20. Don't, he said, I'm not in, am I in the place of God? You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. To bring, you meant it, but God meant it, it unto good. To bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people. Now, God does things and means it for good. So I can hold it against you. What you did against me, my promotion is not to spite you. Bro, sister, your promotion is not to spite your family members. Someone say, I, I pray that God will really make me very wealthy. And so they all see. No, 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 no. Your promotion is to bring glory to God. It's to bring glory to God. Someone say glory to Jesus. That is why those who are just looking for miracle money, miracle money, miracle money, miracle money, and you are looking for miracle money because you want to line your pocket. No, it should be because you want God to be glorified. And however it costs you, whatever it costs you for God to be glorified, you must be ready for that. Hallelujah. You want to be married because you are too old? No, that's not why God makes you marry. <laughs> no, if you, are, you, are, you want to marry because you, you feel you need somebody, this Corona uh, lockdown, a uh, pandemic lockdown has made you feel how you can see you need somebody in your life. Is that why you want to marry? So God should give you a, a wife? God should give you a husband? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. It's also part of the whole package. But fundamentally, first of all, is the glory of God. God will bless you for his name to be glorified. That's what I'm talking about. God will, listen, it doesn't cost God anything to bless you. It doesn't cost God anything to heal you. It doesn't cost God anything to change your status. It doesn't cost God anything to, uh, to, glory, uh, to, to show his power in your life. And that's exactly what he's about to do. So glory to God in the highest. But thank God. It's not just glory being to God. When you glorify God, it also invariably leads to the next. And uh, on earth, peace. Peace, peace. Someone say peace. That is where 
That is where the rainbow culture comes in. Mm. Peace. That is where the rainbow community was born. Peace. That is where. So Christ came so he can give back to a rainbow community. Hallelujah. The rainbow community are those who live primarily to the glory of God. But what makes us a rainbow community is very clear in Ephesians chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 14. He said, For oh, I feel like standing up. <laughs> are you ready? For he talking about Jesus, please give me New King James so we can see the He in capital. Yes, for He Himself is our peace. Let's all say that together. For He Christ Himself, it's He Himself. When you have Christ, you have peace. One, peace with God. So Bible says that. Therefore, uh, having been justified, uh, Romans chapter five, verse one. Having been therefore justified by faith, we have peace with God. Okay? We have peace with God. So the peace, the, the, um, the threefold peace is what I want to draw your attention to. Threefold peace. Your marriage will see peace. Yes, yes, yes. Your marriage, because glory to God in the highest, it doesn't end there. Thank God the statement doesn't just end there. Because on earth, we live on earth, and some things must change on earth. Hey, I'm telling you, those people who say, oh, you don't have to be praying for money. You don't have to be praying for a good job. You don't have to pray. Just, just live your life and wait for heaven. Whilst I'm here, I have to live. If coronavirus kills somebody, how can they preach the gospel? So first piece, the first piece is our peace with God. Our peace with God. In other words, you don't have a problem with God. You can talk to him. He can hear you. And that we used to be estranged in our relation with God because of sin. But now because of Christ, there is peace with God. But that's not the, the only peace. The second peace, which I want to focus on, that is what gives birth to the rainbow community, is Ephesians. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. He himself is our peace. Ah, who has, uh, who has made both? one and has broken down the middle wall of separation hmm. what does that mean this both being one is where the peace is coming from okay. one now when you read the context very well you'll find out that this both is talking about the jews and the gentiles when peter was told to go to the gentiles house to go and preach when he went there to go and preach the jews the jerusalem church got very upset with him how can you go into the house of gentiles because in our culture in our community we don't do that we don't mix it's only jews you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them how could you do that peter how could you have done that now that we are christ has died and we are keeping the church going you now even do what basic jews would not do that's why when Peter saw the vision in Acts chapter 10, he said, no, I can't eat what is unclean. God said, hey, don't call, don't call anything unclean because what? I came to form a rainbow community. <laughs> a rainbow community is the community that is made up of Jews and Gentiles, people from different races, different cultural backgrounds, different nationalities, different uh, uh, social standings, different, different, different genders, different male female, Jew, Gentile, slave, free, different economic uh, standing. We all come together. It's all, watch this, watch this. It's only in the church you can have a rainbow community. You can have a rainbow culture only in the church because human beings can create that. The peace, because whatever you do, there will always be discrimination among people. Mm -hmm. There will always be segregation among people. There will always, that is why the worst thing that happened, uh, one of the worst things that have happened in the heat, history of the church is for racism or racial division to have found itself in the church because the church is supposed the church was created by jesus to have a to be the rainbow community to have the rainbow culture the rainbow culture i mean all kinds of colors all kinds of people with different backgrounds young and old young and old employed and unemployed male and female um talk about it whatever Whatever causes us to divide, divides us. Um, white and black, mm -hmm. Asia and Latino, <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. Once we are in Christ, being in Christ means that color 
is dissolved and we are different colors you may see us different colors but we are glorious even though we are heterogeneous heterogeneous means that different 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 parts different different parts but we have we uh, 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 we are you we have unity so in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 4 he said sorry I'm sorry the other way around chapter 4 verse 3 he said endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace endeavor you can create is the unity that the spirit does the spirit gives us but he gave us this unity so we can have peace amongst ourselves we can sit down your ex-boyfriend your ex-girlfriend your your former husband your former wife can be born again and come to church and sitting here to you and you are all singing they say say hallelujah you look at them and say hallelujah because you are flowing in christ it, it takes only christ to have a rainbow community it takes only christ to have a rainbow culture it takes only christ it takes only christ because that unity that peace that can exist between ex-enemies can only be generated by Christ. And how did he do it? He did it on the cross. When he died on the cross, Bible says that he himself is our peace. He abolished the, verse 15, Ephesians chapter 2, he abolished the enmity contained in ordinances. He, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandment contained in ordinances. Everyone, every group of people have the way they do their things, uh, which excludes other people. We do our things. This is how we eat our food. When you go to Japan, the, the way they sit down to eat, the way they greet, when you go to Russia, is different. The, every group of people have their own way of doing things. It's called the ordinances, religious ordinances, uh, social ordinances, academic, different, different things. Now, Christ comes and on his cross, he, de- he crushes this enmity, that, that enmity, things that divide us. He crushes it. He crushed it on the cross. So when he was born, the angel said, Peace! Peace and goodwill. Uh, and they said, Glory to God in the highest. And, and on earth, peace! Someone shout, Peace! It is this peace that gives us, affords us the rainbow culture in the church. The rainbow culture can only exist in the church. When I say rainbow, different backgrounds, different personalities, different, many different, but we are all one, beautiful, and yet not divided. So, oh, but I know about churches that are fighting among themselves. That is the flesh. That is not the church. They, are, they might be in the church, but walking in the flesh. You walk in the flesh when you say, I don't talk to this Christian. I don't like this Christian. I don't get off this Christian. It's just flesh. When you see some pastors blasting and attacking other pastors, you and fighting among themselves, other believers fighting among themselves. It's the flesh. It doesn't matter how they color it that I want to really speak the truth of God. I want to, no, 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 no. We, the, we can disagree on the matters of doctrine that what this, this man is teaching, teaching that Jesus Christ is 50% man, 50% God. I disagree with him and it's wrong. It's not biblical. And we can disagree in love and not necessarily hate the person, but the doctrine. So we have to fight. Bible says that contend for the faith. If you're a believer, you have to fight for the faith. Anything that wants to tell you that this is not true or what the Bible is not saying is not true, you can't live by it. Contend for the faith. We are called to <laughs> contend for the faith and and keep the unity of the spirit said endeavor to keep endeavor to keep endeavor to keep it don't make it keep it it's already been generated and that's his our peace so the first level of peace is peace with god the second level of peace is peace amongst ourselves to for, to generate the the rainbow culture and the third level of peace is peace in your life peace in your life everything satan has put his hand on to destabilize your peace we, we have the prince of peace he said come unto me all you who labor and i'll give you rest and in the book of um john chapter 14 verse 27 so, peace i live with you when he was dying when he was going he didn't leave like houses cars but he left peace with us so that when you are leaving your house you will have the peace of god in your marriage peace in your health peace that's what i'm prophesying he said glory to god in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill to to men towards men peace peace the angel sang that sang, sang that and this is a day of joy it's a day of glory because god has come on earth to make sure you have your peace if you are a christian if you are born again peace is part of your 
of your covenant redemption package. Redemption package. The covenant comes with peace. It comes with peace. Peace in your health. Peace in your finances. Peace in your marriage, in your family, in your career, in your studies. Sometimes people are studying and their things are not working. Oh, it's too much confusion in my mind. I'm studying, I can't absorb anything. Peace. So both the rainbow peace that we have, peace with God, peace in, in our community, with the, in the church, amongst ourselves, and then peace in your actual life, your life on earth, the way you are living. Things must work for you. Your family must not be in turmoil. I see you enjoying peace. Peace with God, born again. Peace with man, the house of God. Peace in your life, social living. You will do well. Peace in your life. Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube. Don't forget to share and subscribe to our podcast so you're always up to date. Be blessed.